Okay, let's take the time to go through 8.3 real quick. This, first of all, was in your informational on your Google Classroom. So just take a second to look through this and it's kind of a quick review, keep you straight on some things. Um, first of all, uh, it says here, write an ordered pair for the point in which the graph can you see that? intersects the y-axis and what point and what does the point represent? You can't go to page 381. So I'm just gonna make up a point for you. Let's say it's zero comma 32. And what does it represent? It re represents that the X will cross at zero and the Y at 32. So when I have well, it's not actually going to cross at zero. The X is at zero and the Y is at zero, 32. So zero and the Y is at 32 going all the way up here. Let's say that's 32. So this is where it's going to cross the Y axis is right there. So if I want the X intercept, then I want a number for X and I want Y to be zero. Okay. So that's that's the key with this, okay, is when I want the y-intercept, I will have a number for y, but I'll have a zero for x. When I want the x-intercept, I will have a number for x, and y will be zero, okay? That's what you kind of have to remember. X-intercept was when the line crosses the x-axis, which is the horizontal line. So, like right there, that's the x-intercept. The y-intercept is when the line crosses the y-axis, which is the vertical line. So, if this is my graph, that's the y-intercept right there. The y-coordinate of the x-axis is zero. So when I write it like this, and the x-coordinate of the y-intercept is zero. So I would want the y. And for this one, the y would be zero when I want the x, okay? And they would have numbers. So, I drew a line right here. Let's say I did it like this right here. My line, put my arrows on the end of it. I can see my intercepts right there. So my X intercept would be four. I would have a number for X, zero. And my Y intercept, would be zero, two, right there. Over zero, up two, okay? So if I want my y-intercept, I have a y-value. If I want my x-intercept, I have an x-value, and the other ones become zero, okay? If it's a vertical or horizontal line, meaning if this is my coordinate grid right here, and I have a vertical line. This is a vertical line right here. That's vertical. I would have no y-intercept, right? I would only have an x-intercept because it doesn't cross the y-value. If I had a horizontal line, so if this is my coordinate grid, and I had a horizontal line like this, I would only have, this is a horizontal, I would have no x-intercept. I would only have a y-intercept. So keep that in mind when you're drawing vertical and horizontal lines. All right, so what I'm asking you to do is two pages. Let's do 
this one right here, it's your study guide and review. That's a yes, and I want you to do all. And this page right here, this is yes, and this is all, okay? They're not numbered, uh, page numbered, so that's a problem. But you're doing one through, look for the one that's one through 15, okay? And then look for the other one to be the study guide. You have a third, another page right here, another practice page that has a story problem. And for now, you're gonna skip this for now. We may do it later, so don't cross it out or throw it away or whatever. So here's what you wanna do. When you wanna find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, when you wanna find the x-intercepts, well, let's just remember this, x-intercept is gonna be, I want x, plug zero in for y and solve. The y-intercept means, plug zero in for x, I want y. Just remember that, those are your ordered pairs. So for the first one, Draw your lines like that. This is your X, this is your Y, okay? So here's my Y, I substituted in for Y. I get zero equals X minus five. Now, I'd prefer it on a separate sheet of paper. There's not enough room on here until you get to the graphing portions, but I need to solve for X. So I'm gonna add five to both sides and I'm gonna find out that x equals five. That's my x-intercept. Now I'm gonna plug zero in for x. Well, that's easy. If I put zero in here, I'm just left, don't forget, negative five. Okay, then we can go on to my next one. This one looks a little bit interesting because I noticed there's no x value. If there's no x value, there can't be an x-intercept. And if there's no x-intercept, you just say none. So for x-intercept, you say none. But y-intercept, you're gonna plug zero in for x, well there's no x, and solve for y. So you just need to solve for y. Meaning, add opposite here, and add one to both sides, and you'll have one, y equals one. So obviously, remember based on that little review that we just did, that must be, if there is no x-intercept, Obviously, that must be a horizontal line when I have y equals one. It must cross the y-intercept at positive one. Then you're gonna go on to the next problem. And you'll notice this is in a slightly different form too, but that's okay. When you want the x-intercept, you make y zero. When you want the y-intercept, you make x zero. Just remember to add opposite. When you get down to your graphs, you'll only be graphing two points. So for my x-intercept, I want x, this is zero. My y-intercept, I want y, and x is zero. So plug zero in for y, right here. And then you have to solve the equation, just like you would solve a normal equation. And this is where I'm saying, I don't think you have enough room, but zero equals negative three x plus negative three, add three to both sides. 3 is equal to negative 3x. Divide both sides by negative 3. x is equal to negative 1. So see, you have to be good at solving equations. So I'm going to put my x-intercept at negative 1. Now I need to do my y-intercept, where I'm going to plug 0 in here. That means this is going to go away. And I'm left with y equals negative 3. Done. That was easy. So to the left, and this one is down three, like that. Make sure you grab your ruler. You only have two points to plot. Make sure you're accurately plotting them. Graph, and done. Arrows on the end. Extend your graph. Don't make it short. Extend the graph, there's no story. If there's a story, we may change what our graph looks like, but for the most part, that's exactly what I want you to do. Take your time, shows you exactly up here what you need to do. Plus I showed you on the video. Plus we discussed it on this reading right here. Plus you can look at Khan Academy to help support you. You have a lot of resources that you can use. Make sure you use them. Chapter eight is extremely important that you master it.